going to welcome in, as we do this time every week, Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City. Talk some high school sports. Good morning, Mike. Hey, Sully, how are you this morning? What's happening, man? You on the way to Homedale? Uh, actually, no, actually just taking kind of a day off today, but we'll be following, you know, what happens up there with the meet of champions. Interested to see how uh, Kevin Ansek of Mayland Regional runs, uh, Olivia Schaefer of Egg Harbor Township, and I believe Alexa Palmieri of Ocean City will be in that race from the Cape Atlantic League. So, and kind of a quiet night last night for Cape Atlantic League football teams. But certainly, you know, congratulations to Haddonfield and Shawnee, two teams I saw last week, uh, you know, on winning South Jersey titles last night. So, sound like you were driving. Are you, you, the wife dragging you out to, to go hunt for a Christmas tree, or what's going on? <laughs> it's a little early for that. I am in the car, though. <laughs> hey, before we get going on, on high school sports, uh, now when you're coaching the seventh grade basketball team and you're shooting some free throws, do you do that little uh, shake and bake thing? A la Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz thing. Uh, no, I mean, I actually last night with no high school football, I was up at the Sixers for uh, Jimmy Butler's home debut and have some Sixers stories on our website at pressofac.com. And I, uh, Markel Fultz never fails to surprise when he steps to the foul line. I, I wrote a story earlier this week. I just think it's time that all of us maybe – you know, take a step back and a deep breath and, and give Markel Fultz some space and and let's think about him in May and, and see what his future is. Because certainly, uh, you know, every time he steps to the foul line, it is something entertaining. The uh, the hot potato foul shot last night was something <laughs> to be seen. But he made, he made two or four of them. So, there you, go. Uh, you know, who, who knows? So, Mike, talking some high school football here. Um. Obviously, we got a couple championship games today. I don't know if you've seen Williamstown this year, but, man, they've been rolling. They're going to take on RV at 7 o'clock tonight. Woodrow Wilson at Burlington Township at 1. And uh, Salem at Pensgrove at noon. I mean, these these are some of the top teams in South Jersey and some really interesting matchups today. Yeah, and I've seen most of these teams play this season. I think a real interesting game is Woodrow Wilson versus Burlington Township. I'm just curious to see how many points is scored in that game. Of course, you know, I was at the game earlier this season where Woodrow Wilson quarterback Nick Karcherman threw for a state record, what was it, 500 and something yards. Uh, and then I saw Burlington Township beat Oakcrest in the first round. You know, Omar Rogers, the kind of a dynamic wide receiver and defensive back for Burlington Township. Tom Madera, a, a coach of Burlington Township, had some great offensive teams with Holy Cross in the, in the 1990s and early 2000s, and he's continued that trend at Burlington Township. So I think of, of all the games today, I mean, Burlington Township versus Woodrow Wilson for that Group 3 championship just might be the most entertaining of the day. Seeing Woodrow Wilson in the championship game give me flashbacks to 88 and 89 against them, my hometown Lacey. <laughs> right. Exactly. The Keith Elias and days. I, uh, right. And, uh, you know, Woodrow Wilson, a tradition of great success over the years, I remember – Back in 95, Mainland Regional played them in the Group 3 title game up there at Woodrow Wilson on a on just a freezing cold day. Uh, you know, one of the coldest days I've ever been out covering high school football. And I think Egg Harbor Township in 2001 or 2002, one of Tony DeRosa's first season, went up there and lost to Woodrow Wilson. So, obviously, Woodrow Wilson, a fantastic school with a great football tradition. And I just think that's going to be a real entertaining game. That could be the team with the ball last is going to win that game. Oh, without a doubt. We, we had the uh, over-under pegged at around 65. <laughs> could be. Could be. You know, and then obviously Nick Cardman, just a great year. Uh, you know, that Cedar Creek game, what was that, 57, 35, something like that, throwing for over 500 yards. A lot of Division One talent, that wide receiver for Woodrow Wilson. So that will certainly be an interesting game to watch uh, this afternoon. And, and as, you know, Williamstown, just a tremendous team, you know, going through Group 5, 11 and 0. Coach Frank Fuchitola does a great job out there. You know, J.C. Collins at quarterback, Wade Inge at running back, and and just a fantastic, fantastic defense uh, for Williamstown. That's really been, you know, at the core of their success all season. You look at the score of their games. You know, they don't give up many points. You know, uh, they usually give up a touchdown or less. So if you're going to do that, you're gonna you're gonna find yourself a, a way to win a lot of football games. Talk with Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City. And, Mike, 
Uh, this week coming up, we have the traditional Thanksgiving games, uh, some longstanding traditions like Holy Spirit, Atlantic City, Ocean City, Pleasantville. Is uh, the lower middle still play on Thanksgiving? Yeah, the Anchor the, Bowl the is Anchor still Bowl. there. You know, Millville, Vineland, Atlantic City, Holy Spirit, and and from the Cape Atlantic League area, you know, two games that Wednesday night, Oak Crest, Abzagami, and Mainland, Egg Harbor Township. I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler here for uh, – you know, what we're going to do in, in the paper this week, uh, I believe on Thanksgiving Day I'll have a column in where I, I uh, kind of voice my opinion on Thanksgiving football, and I think my opinion is that maybe it's time that we all move on from Thanksgiving football. I think, uh, you know, I think the, the state is moving in a direction <laughs> where, you know, we're moving towards the state championship game. I think as, as good as these holiday rivalries are, I just think they're too inconvenient now for the current players and coaches, and it's time time to move on from these games, basically. I, I think you're going to have to if, if you want to implement a true state champion like most of the other states. It just there's, It's kind of a weird uh, – it falls on a Thursday, so you can't play that, that following weekend. So there's just – and you, you basically need five weeks of playoffs if you're going to come down to a, an overall state champion like other right. states do. And my, my thing is it's just awkward now with when the playoffs begin, when teams end their season. I mean, you have teams like uh, Atlantic City and Mainland. They're off for almost 10 days or 11 days before they, uh, you know, before they play on Thanksgiving. You have they or they play in these meaningless consolation games, which, you know, uh, I'm not so sure what good they're for. So my idea would be to take these games, take Millville Violent, take Atlantic City Holy Spirit, Take Oak Crest Abzigami, take Lower Middle, and play them opening week of the season. Play them on that Labor Day weekend. Use it as a day. Use it as a you know a, a game to sort of celebrate the beginning of the school year. I think the crowds would be good. I think the games would have more meaning because they would actually affect teams' playoff chances and and everything. And I think you know would give teams motivation. Imagine you're on Millville or Violin and you're lifting weights in the summer or running sprints <laughs> in the summer knowing that you're going to start your season playing against your biggest rival. So I just think it's time to move on from these games and sort of make them the opener and use them to sort of, you know, springboard the high school football season and, you know, end the entire school year. I think schools could do a lot with open houses or, you know, just pep, pep rallies, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. Just kicking off the school year with a big event that brings the entire school together. Isn't that what uh, Lacey Central has done? They they kind of gave up their their Thanksgiving robbery a long time ago, right? Ten years ago or so. Yeah, yeah, they did. But a lot of schools in the short conference have made the switch. I mean, Brick Brick Memorial. A lot of other schools have made the switch from Thanksgiving to uh, to uh, you know the beginning of the season. And then on the flip side, I, I think what it does too is it gives you time to sort of recover from. Uh, from the winter season, for the winter season, I mean, basketball and wrestling tryouts start, I believe, you know, Monday, okay? And a lot of teams are playing uh, football games on Thursday. So a lot of football guys are missing the first three days of tryouts or whatever. So here, you know, your season would end in, in the beginning of November, and, and the kids could take a week or two off, heal their bodies up, get some rest. And, and, you know, they could go into the basketball season or the wrestling season or the swimming season, you know, uh, with some rest. You know, uh, I, I just think it's an idea that whose time has uh, come. I know a lot of people love the Thanksgiving Day games, but I think, you know, if you flip them and make them an opener to the season, I, I think they can be just as big. Mike, talking about Thanksgiving games that are still on the schedule, a uh, pretty good one. In Pleasantville this year, they're going to be taking on Ocean City, and that game came down to the final play last year where Ocean City made a huge goal line stand to win it and some pretty talented teams going at it, and they're both, you know, really have a lot to play for in terms of getting that final win of the season. If Pleasantville could win, I believe it would be their eighth win of the season. Uh, talking about a team that was 0-10 a couple years ago, so they're looking to really kind of establish themselves as one of the better teams in, in the Cape Atlantic League area, so that should be a fun one for sure. Yeah, uh, that's the game I'll be going to on Thanksgiving, and I can't, you know, can't wait to see it. I think, you know, Pleasantville's going to look to rebound from that Haddonfield loss. Of course, like you said, what's Pleasantville? Seven and three. Two of the three losses are to Haddonfield, an undefeated team that's won two straight Group Two titles. So no shame there for Pleasantville. 
They're going to look to cap one of their best seasons in years. They're going to look to give their seniors, guys who have come in, Mohamed Torre, Elijah Glover, uh, Samir Jones, Pleasantville seniors who have really changed, you know, how we all think about that Greyhound program. They're look, going to look to go out on a winning note. And on the flip side, you have a very, very entertaining Ocean City team. I mean, I can't wait to go there and see, you know, wide receiver Brandon Lashley play, who's just put up some fantastic numbers for the Red Raiders. So I think, again, you talk about the Thanksgiving Day matchups, and they're kind of like bowl games in a way. You know, it's kind of been a while since two weeks since those teams have played. They're kind of like college bowl games. I mean, that's, that's going to be uh, – you know, a really entertaining game to play, uh, to see on Thanksgiving. That along with, you know, Millville Byman are probably your top Cape Atlantic League matchups on, uh, on Thanksgiving Day. And, Mike, one cool thing that Holy Spirit's going to do, they're going to have a, a breakfast before the game and kind of honor uh, several past championship teams. So that will be kind of a, a neat thing to – they're always looking to enhance their tradition over there at Holy Spirit. And it will be cool for these, these guys that are playing this year to – to kind of get to mingle with some of those guys from the uh, 80s and 90s. Yeah, absolutely, and especially the fact that Holy Spirit is going to go on and play St. Joe in the state non-public two title game, you know, that first weekend, either November 30th or December 1st, up at MetLife Stadium. And that would be the argument for the Thanksgiving games is, you know, the alumni's home, uh, they can come back and see, you know, the game, see their alma mater play. You know, that's the big reason for you know, the Thanksgiving games, that and the tradition. So, uh, you know, Holy Spirit doing a good job there sort of celebrating their past while they've got a chance to sort of add to that legacy by, uh, you know, obviously they play Atlantic City on Thanksgiving, but 10 days later or nine days later, they'll be playing their biggest rival, St. Joe, for a state title up at MetLife Stadium. Mike, what's your outlook on that game? They played once earlier this year, 28-14 win by St. Joe. What do you think Spirit has to do to, to compete in this game and maybe pull off the upset? Well, I think you, what, what Spirit has to do is figure out a way to sustain what they did in the first quarter of that game. I mean, uh, remember that game? Holy Spirit went up 14-0. Uh, they were down uh, in deep inside St. Joe territory, I believe inside the 10-yard line on another opportunity early in that game and turned the ball over. So I think they were they had a chance to go up 21 nothing in that game, and then of course uh, it's really been the story of the high school football season. Jada Byers of St. Joe, great running back, makes five or six spectacular plays, which he seems to do on a week in and week out basis, and St. Joe wins the game 28-14. So I think what Spirit has to do is figure out a way to sort of sustain the offense that they had early in that game. And the toughest part is they've got to figure out a way to slow down Jada Byers, which nobody has been able to do so far this season, especially in the state non-public playoffs. What, one playoff game, what, he touched the ball eight times in the first round and scored six touchdowns? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you do better than that? Great stuff, as always, Mike. Uh, I know you're busy. Enjoy your day off. We appreciate the time, as always. We'll catch up with you next week, buddy. All right, Sully, anytime. Thanks for having me.